Hey everybody. Let's let's get started. We'll wait for some a few people to get in here. I have an issue with my stool it, that my camera is on is gotten a little wobbly and I don't know why. So when I get through with here, I got to fix that. I had to go back to my handy dandy iPhone microphone because I ordered a new microphone, but it was two mics instead of a set of headphones. So I don't like that too much. I just don't understand it. Anyway, I'll keep playing until I get a sound that I like and that y'all can hear. How's my sound? Give me some thumbs up if it sounds okay. Hello from Italy. Hey, Elizabeth. Sometimes I can't pronounce names and I'm not going to butcher them. So, um, I'm, okay, if the sound is good, we'll go then. Um, I'm excited. You know, today is the, oh, there's my sister, bossy sister. Yep, she, she thinks I'm pretty bossy. Uh, she lives in Farmville, North Carolina. Let's see. What else am I going to talk about? Oh, yes. We have a new tool. Uh, and I have it right here. And if you haven't seen it yet, I, in fact, I put this scarf on because it's ombre. And it's all the colors of the tools I'm going to be showing you. So in honor of the colors of the tools... We're going to show you our newest little duster. Now, this this is just a little tiny duster. See how little it is? It's good for the car. Our other duster was impregnated with wax, and if you left it on the upholstery, it would make a mark. But this one is just a, these wonderful little chenille fingers. And it makes it so nice. And it's just right for little hands, too. If you got a youngin in the house that wants to play, wants to help mommy. And when you use something, so you can take this thing off and wash it. You can have a lot of fun. You can use this to scrub the car if you're washing the car. Little ones can use it to scrub the floor if they want to, if it's wet. So you just have to... Um, let them play. Playing is fun. That's how they learn. Okay. Let's see. Show and tell. I'm waiting on people to get in here. So that's why I'm doing show and tell right now. We have our, this is our normal, our regular mop. You see, it's about, 12 the dimensions I don't have the dimensions in front of me but somebody posted the dimensions on it and it comes with this this it's got two sides on it one's a little um got a little more nap to it than the other side and to get the chenille fingers you have to buy this which does a great job I, I use it all the time but I kept saying, we need, I got a lot of floors. I mean to tell you, I have the, one of those open floor plans that people love. And I said, I need a wider mop. So we found this. And it comes with a chenille head. It comes with a chenille head. Look at this. As compared to the other one. I think I can do it right here. Look at that. It's four inches wider. Four inches. Uh-oh, I knocked my phone. Four inches. <laughs> and it comes with this chenille head. So that's a saving step right there. And then you can get an extra cloth to go with it if you want to I like having two it makes cleanup easy 
So let's see if we've got some questions coming in. Now let me explain some stuff to you. If you want to be on camera with me, you got to turn your phone this way. And I'll have to scroll back through to see people who have a question. So give me a second here. Uh, here is Jessica Blaine. I'm going to call on Jessica and see if she wants to be in on our little conversation. Invite Jessica to the broadcast. Jessica Blaine. I'm inviting her. Let's see. Come on, Jessica. You can do it. You just have to accept the invitation. She has a question about the best way to store papers. Hey, Jessica. Hold on. I'm being confused. Disconnected my uh, Bluetooth. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, so <laughs> sorry about that. Um, yeah, so how do I store papers that I, like, need for moving, like the um, – and I have all like my important like your social security card, birth certificates, etc. in a separate area that stays with me. Um, but like other paperwork that I need to save, what do I do with those? Well, if um, they're important and then, uh, papers, papers with your social security numbers on them, and that that sort of thing, I would keep them with me. That okay. that way, it yeah, I was funny on those ones. Yeah. But the other papers, um, most papers you can probably get rid of unless they're, they're claims on insurance and you're going to be deducting them on your income tax. Okay. And then a uh, second question really quick was, what do you do with old insurance papers? Like the, there's, the policy is no longer active. And also cars that you don't have anymore. What do you do with those paperwork? Just well, I, I, I watch a lot of, um, I listen to a lot of XM radio and there is, um, old cars. There, there is a charity that you can donate your car to called cars for kids. And it's spelled K A R S. Yeah, ours, ours were uh, totaled. So oh. are the two that my husband's gone through. <laughs> um, well, they need to be uh, given to a junkyard. They need to be yeah, taken were... off for scrap. And yeah, you they were. Gotta... Right, they're long gone. Yeah, they're way uh, long gone. But uh, what was the first part of this question? Um, first part the of papers the that part. I. Have, uh, yeah, I understand what you meant. <laughs> the the papers I have like on them, like the old. Um, loan papers that the loans have been paid off. Do I keep those just in case the bank goes, uh, get a, oh, you didn't pay Get papers. a shredder. Or have you got a fire pit? Um, yes, I just, I'm afraid to do any fire stuff because my husband's deployed and I really don't want to start anything. <laughs> yeah, but you got to move and you're going to have to pack up. And if you pack it all up, well, it's a military move, so the the main thing you don't need that stuff. Okay. You you don't need it if you've already paid it off, and you have a record where you've paid it off. You don't need those okay. things. You're holding on to those because you might need them someday. But get rid of them, shred them. He can't get them back if they're shredded. You're not ever That's very gonna true. miss them. You're not ever gonna no. miss them. And you don't want to move okay. them because that's just one more thing for you to put away when you get to your new place. Where are you moving to and from? Um, I'm in Colorado right now. I'm not going to go into any more detail in that. Um, okay. So, and then um, he's going to be getting out. So we're going to be moving back to his home state of Arizona. Oh, well, that's a so. beautiful state. Start yes, a new I'm, state. A new... I'm glad to get away from the snow. I'm sick of snow. <laughs> <laughs> I can't much blame you. We don't get a lot here, but when we get it, we get dumped on. But I, I like I like my summertime as long as it doesn't get too hot, and then I like one snow in the winter, and I'm good to go. 
That's about the extent of my snow loving. Well, have have you been using my moving tips to get ready to move? Um, I should relook back into them. I have about a year next month. I'll be here. Well, you can start then, working your way around the house for the zones and getting rid of stuff you don't want to take to your new home. Have you found a place okay. to live yet? Um, no, we're that's on the discussion list for when he gets back from deployment. <laughs> well, you can start then building we'll be your about list. Ways. Yeah, then you can mm -hmm. start. You can start dreaming right now. You can start, uh, get you a notebook and just start writing down some of the things and pictures of things that you would like. You know, get your want list going. Dreaming is always fun. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for your service. I know being a military spouse is a tough, tough way to live when they're on deployment. It's been tough, especially with a toddler. Yes, <laughs> but you can do it and you've, you've been doing it. So I'm really proud of you mm -hmm. for being the mom and the dad in the home right now. And it's going to be great when he gets back. One thing I want to, uh, to, <laughs> I see you. One thing I want you to remember, you got to let him be, um, you, you got to let him be the dad. You got to let him be the husband. Mm -hmm. And you're so used to doing everything, but you got to, you got to. I want him to take back over. I'm going to be like, be the dad. I just want to be the mom now. <laughs> this is good. This is good because that's going to help him feel better about being home. I mean, I know we can lug those 40 pounds of dog food. It's not a problem, but oh. you know, <laughs> he don't remind me. <laughs> yes. He can do those things too. And he will feel needed and loved when he becomes integrated back into your home. So that's one of the things I go all over the country and speak to military families about is, is letting them come back home and being a part of the family. Cause you've been the boss and when you've been bossy for over a year, it, it's hard to let go of that. So you're going to have to kind of cool down and, and start asking for things instead of demanding things because okay. You just got to slow the way you think down and realize that he's part of the household and, and start practicing. How would you, you know, just pretend that he's home and just say, say to yourself, okay, I got 40 pounds of dog food in the trunk of the car. What do I do now? And, you know, I know we're capable women. This is a wonderful thing. But when you ask them to unscrew the pickle jar or anything like that, it gives them, you know, he man muscles. They need me, you know? That's, that's one thing that I ha kind of have to do. He'll hand me the pickle jar. <laughs> <laughs> I have a little um, mat that you put on the pickle jar and unscrew the top. <laughs> it's one of those funny hey, things. We've all got our talents. That's wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Jessica, for asking the question. We we'll see you all later. Right, thank you for answering. Mm -hmm. Yep, thank bye you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Uh, let's see. Let's see. Where we got? Uh, somebody else have a question. Uh, let's see. Who else here? Um, I'm going to call on Jeanette Valencia. Okay, here we go. Invite Jeanette in. She has some questions. She's in San Francisco. Hey, Jeanette. Uh-oh, she declined. Okay, let me see if I got somebody else. It's hard for me to read and talk at the same time. Okay, here's Lori Crowley. Hello, Lori. Let's see if we can get you in on this. Invite Lori to the podcast. She's got some questions about paperwork. Some tough questions. Hey, Lori, we're inviting you in. Come on down. It's going to be fun. It's okay. If I can do it, anybody can do it. I had to spray my hair with a lot of hairspray to keep it out of my eyes. 
I'm going to have to do that a lot because it's just getting to where I want to cut my own bangs with scissors. And that's not fun. My hairdresser will get me if I do that. I haven't seen her in uh, two months. There's Lori. Hello. Hi. Sorry, new to this. You're new to this. Well, we all are. It's a new feature <laughs> on Facebook Live. So, how are you today? That's weird. <laughs> I'm good. I came across some um, came across some um, items from when uh, my first son passed away. I also have medical information from when my third son or second and third sons passed away. And I was wondering if the paperwork, it's just medical copies, if it's okay to shred. Because it's not something I want to look at every day. Yeah, I think it would probably be okay. How many years has it been? Your hand's in front of the camera. Oh, sorry. Um, 16, 15, and 9. And, I've lost and three. how long? You've lost three sons. Yes. Oh, my. I will keep you in my prayers. Got, That's tough. Thank God I have a I have a rainbow baby, so I definitely have been blessed. And she actually has a kiss from like a angel wing on her forehead, which is from her brother. Oh, how sweet! Um, as far as looking at those things every once in a while, it's tough, and. Anything that makes you sad and you realize that it makes you sad is important to get out of your home. So if running across these medical papers, one of the things we do that we don't realize we do is we move things from one spot to another. And if we will just deal with it and, and see, do I ever, am I ever going to need this again? You have pictures of those babies and you don't need to look at how much it costs for them to die, you know? You don't need to look at those medical paperwork. So get rid of it. Get a shredder and destroy it. Put it in a fire pit and send it up to heaven, you know? Just send it up to heaven, you know? Yeah. Just... <laughs> I like that. And what about, I have a blanket and a hat from my first one. I don't have anything from my second and third other than medical papers and a few ultrasound pictures. Well, if you want That's to keep that, struggling. you can. Well, um, does it make you really sad when you see it or are you happy? Yes. Yes. No, it's, it still brings sadness. Still brings sadness. Well, I would box it up and put it away. Uh, and, <laughs> That's and what I've lay. done for the last. That's well, then, then do something different. Then. Just, every time I come across it is hard. Well, just let it go then. It's time to let it go. Okay. And you'll know. Your finger's in front of the camera again. Oh, sorry. Well, thanks for your question. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Thank thanks you for your, for your question. Help. I'll be praying for I've you. I've been a fly baby. I love you. Years. Thank you, sweetie. Love you too. Bye. Okay, bye-bye. There we go. Let's see who else we got here. There's Karen. I love Karen. She is one of our mentors who works with my nephew at Fly Lady Premium. Let's see. Those of my helpers out there, Maybe you need to tell me when somebody has a question so I can find them. Let's see. Keep going, keep going, keep going. It's hard for me to do this and talk at the same time. Well, let me talk a little bit about, I want, for some reason, they're not scrolling anymore. Swipe left to see. Oh, look at that. I didn't know I could do that. I'm learning stuff all the time. Let me get to the very. You put in so many comments. 
And it's hard for me to keep up, especially if I stop to talk to somebody. Uh, let's. Well, let me talk about, um, now they're starting to scroll. Maybe I'll see some of them. Uh, our paper clutter. We have all kinds of paper clutter. This week, I've gotten rid of a bunch of magazines and newspapers. I had a stack of newspapers like two feet high that Robert took off to recycle him. And it feels so good to get rid of stuff. Uh, the newspapers, we get one newspaper and then we get these little flyers that come in the mail. Um, sorry about that, I need a little drink of water. Um, and they just keep, they come twice a week, and there's probably two years worth of newspapers that were in our magazine rack that we used to start fires with. And it's okay, it's okay to get rid of these things. I, we keep a recycling bag that we put magazines in when we're finished reading them, and Robert takes those off to recycling. So staying on top of the clutter coming in your house is going to make you feel so much better. Now, I have a hard time letting go of Christmas cards, of um, memorabilia that comes out. I'm not going to get rid of any mem memorabilia. I have bin, a bin that I keep them in, and I have uh, banker boxes at the office that some of the things are in. And I don't have a lot of paper. I have a lot of books, and those books are books that I've read and books that I want to keep and books that are reference books. So I'm, I'm not really, I've gotten rid of one big bag of books. Uh, I don't really consider books paper clutter, uh, but piles of papers, you know, those papers that come in the mail and you open them up and you try to hold on to bills that you've paid and all of these things. Well, nowadays you can see most everything. Unless you're running a business out of your home, you might not need to keep electric bills. If you're, you know, if you're saying that um, you have a business in your home and you're like this room, I could probably declare this room as a home office, but I'm not gonna do that. When the servers were in the basement, I could have declared the basement office as as part of something, but it just it it throws up a red flag to the IRS, and none of us want to be audited by the IRS. So this is why I don't I don't count those rooms on my income tax. I just want to keep my stuff. I mean, I've known of home offices that stored a sewing machine. They got, got audited, and I, it's just no, no sense in it. And no more electricity than it takes to run this little room. Who needs that hassle? But there are other lots of paper clutter. I've got every income tax return that Robert has ever filed and that we have filed. We've been married 20 years, and we can go back to about 14 years before that, when, when he was, you know, he's got all those, it only takes up this much room in the filing cabinet, only about 12 inches. And they're all in, they're all in manila folders. So they don't take up a lot of room. I keep my, my calendar. I keep my calendars from year to year. I can look back on my calendars and it's like a history of fly lady, all the appointments, all the radio shows, interviews I've done. So it, it brings me joy to look back. And plus I charted my weight for many years every day. And I could see on those, it was like milestones. I could see when I started gaining back, when I stopped losing, when, um, when I got anemic, I could, I could kind of figure out by my schedules, what was going on. So there are a lot of things that you can see on your calendar that if you kept them, and I've got 
since we've been selling a calendar, 11 years of calendars. And they don't take up a lot. Of, I keep them underneath my bathroom sink. Now, if it leaks under there, they could get wet and ruined. And there, it's done. I hadn't thought about that. I might have to put them in one of my new little new little tubs I got in my closet. So it, it's getting the things that don't bring you joy, like those medical records. And, I mean, I've gotten rid of all my stepfather's medical records. I've gotten rid of all my mother's medical records. You know, keeping a control journal, <coughs> keeping a control journal, and it's an office in a bag. That's what um, the original office in a bag was used for. Was with my mother when she, I would have to take her to the emergency room when she was really sick, and I was in charge of her health care, and it was important for me to have that readily available. So all I had to do was grab and go. And our, our little office in a bag has a handle on it. Doesn't take up a lot of space. I kept all my, my mother's insurance papers, everything that was happening in her day-to-day -day life, all her med medicine, all that stuff was right there. And then I just open it up and show the doctors what she's taken and, you know, when she was been the ER the last time, you know, all these things was right there at my fingertips. And that makes it, it takes a lot out of you when you're the, the health care provider, you know, when you're the, the person who sees after your family. So having all that medical stuff right there with you is great. Now, other other papers that you have. I'm trying to think what have been my stumbling blocks. Okay. When you bring the mail in and you just put it on the kitchen counter and then it piles up and piles up and piles up and eventually it falls off in the floor and you get it all, put it in a bag and stuff it in your closet. You know what I'm talking about. You know who you are. Yep. You know, you, the thing, thing you have to do is you're scared to throw those bags of papers away that are stuffed in your closet because you've lost something. I've got a car title somewhere. It was my son's car title. I guarantee you it's, it's here someplace. And I said something to Robert the other day when I was cleaning out this room, I said, you'll never believe what I found. He said, you found the Explorer car title. And I said, no, and you're in trouble for bringing that up. And we laughed. Now, it's, it's in a safe place. Don't you have those safe places? We, you know, we have this mail that comes in, and it piles up because we don't deal with it. First off, mail has to earn the right to come in your house. We had one fly baby who put an industrial shredder in her garage. And when she got out of her car, she would just toss into the shredder the stuff that didn't earn the right to come in her house. And the shredder was good enough that it would, it would um, shred credit card stuff, lots of, pa lots of piles of paper, you know, four to six sheets. And, she never had to bring that stuff in the house. She would undo the ones she was going to keep and take them in the house, and she had a spot to put them. And they would go, we called it the leaf. We had this little bulldog clip that was a, <clears throat> a dogwood blossom. And that bulldog clip is where we kept all our bills. Now Robert deals with paying the bills, and he pays them as soon as they come in. He takes them right downstairs, writes a check, and puts it by the door ready to go to the mailbox. And that keeps us from having to wait from, from the 1st to the 15th. So keeping a shredder by the door or in the garage is going to help you <clears throat> keep those hot spots from piling up. You know those hot spots. Those hot spots take over our whole house. Papers that we just don't know what to do with. 
we have to get rid of these papers. Now, I suggest if you live in an area where you can do and have a fire pit and put some limbs and things on the fire, that you start putting things in a paper bag uh, that you can use as kindling. And this way, you'll make memories and get, get rid of clutter at the same time. And if you have these little bastions of paper clutter stuffed in drawers, just pull out six inches at a time and start going through them and put them in, those, in that paper bag you're going to burn in the fire pit. It's going to be fun. You're going to get rid of clutter a little at a time. Focus just five minutes a day. You can go In five minutes, you can go through a stack if you will, instead of looking and, and trying to figure out if you want to keep it. You can get rid of it. You really can. It doesn't have to be hard. So let's see if we got any, any, uh, hey, Karen, do you want to come on with me? Second Tuesday of the month, the paper will be collected on the street. Now there's a lot of paper that we don't want to put it out for, for collection because it may have our social security numbers and stuff on it, or it could be credit card applications. I burn all credit card applications because it's, it's um, people can get credit cards in your name and have them mailed to them. And that's not fun. That is not fun at all. So let's see if we got any more people that want to talk because I'm not good at talking to myself, y'all. You know that. You know I don't like to do that. Let's see. Where else? Come on, y'all. We got some more questions. We need questions. I want you to commit to going through the mail when it comes in the house. Now, Robert doesn't go through my mail. He processes his mail, and then he hands me mine. And I look at it, and it's usually, I just hold it up like it's, like it's a deck of, like it's cards in a playing hand. And I go, nope, 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 nope. And I have a trash can right beside me. Put a trash can readily available to you this trash can we have in the in the living room is between mine and robert's chair behind our table and immediately he know he knows that that trash can never gets put in the trash to be thrown out it's trash that gets burned and i sort through it once a week on fridays and it either goes in the fireplace or he takes it out to the fire pit and burns it. And we're good. Let's see, who else? Immediate. Let's see, who I don't want to sing. Y'all don't want me to sing. Okay, folks, we need some questions. I'm running out of questions. Email, let's see, Lori's talking about email. Y'all are having side conversations and I'm, I'm getting uh, lost here. <laughs> let's see, family pictures, I have tons of them. Dottie, you want to come on with me? Let's see, I'm going to call on Dottie. She's got her phone the right way. Come on, Dottie, you can do it. If I can do it, anybody can do it. You can do it. I don't know who's emailing me privately. Let's see. Come on, Dottie. You can do it. The sun going in and out makes the screen get lighter or darker. That's funny. Well, I don't guess Dottie wants to be on with me. Her question was family pictures, tons of them, three generations. How do I go through them and get rid of them? Well, let me tell you what I did with our family pictures. We took pictures of them. Robert set up a jig with his good camera in the basement. But, you know, 
iPhones and cell phones are pretty good at making pictures these days. And we took, he took pictures of them and edited them. And then I put them up on Facebook and tagged all my friends and family with them. And then I took them and put them up on Ancestry.com and labeled them all. I, I labeled a whole bunch, about a hundred of them. And these were old pictures. And it makes it good because in, in you know, 20 years, my grandchildren may want to know who their great, who my grandmother was, you know? And they'll be there on Ancestry.com and they can see them. I can, you know, when I'm playing around on one weekend, I don't have a whole lot to do. I like to go in there and I've gone back to the 16th century on most of the people. And <clears throat> it's fun. It's a hobby, you know, and we've got these pictures. We're not going to have a lot of pictures for our children because we take digital pictures and they're on Facebook. We never print pictures out, but it doesn't hurt to print a few pictures every once in a while or to take the pictures and print them at home and put them in a scrapbook. That was one thing that my mother did that I, I treasure. She took pictures that were in old scrapbooks and made each of us girls a scrapbook of our family. Now she did do some personal editing by, by not giving us many pictures of my father, which I thought was in bad taste, but uh, I found some on the backs of some pictures. So putting together an album for your children to take with them when they go. Now, here's another thing we have tons of cookbooks and recipes stuffed in a drawer. You know, the recipes you tear out of a magazine, you know, when you're sitting at the, at the car repair place and you see this recipe you want to try, you just tear it out, stuff it in your purse. We don't have to do that anymore. We can take a picture of it instead of messing the magazine up for the people that are going to sit there, you know, not have anything to do. We can get rid of those. We can take pictures of them. The old family recipes that your grandmother wrote out by hand on a note card and gave you, I'd frame them, put them up in your kitchen next to her iron skillet. Wouldn't that be beautiful? Those recipes mean a lot to us. I have granddaddy L.E.'s, uh, Justin's granddaddy, Justin's dad's father, and he had this amazing barbecue sauce. I got a picture of it in his handwriting. Isn't that fun? So if, if you just got to sort through a little of them at a time, and then you can label them and put them in a folder on your computer, and you can find them when you want them. Now, as far as the cookbooks go, one time we had a mutiny on Fly Lady. Yep, a mutiny. We asked people to get rid of one cookbook, one little old cookbook. I even suggested it was one that came with your crock pot or one that came with your oven. Just get rid of one little cookbook. People didn't want to do it. And now the internet is flooded with recipe sites. Who needs a cookbook anymore? If you want to cook a taco casserole, all you got to do is look up a Mexican casserole and make it yours. Isn't that fun? We don't even need cookbooks. But we got a lot of them. But you got to be careful when you're decluttering cookbooks. One time... I tried to declutter Robert's cookie cookbook. I've told this story a million times. It was blue. It's this color blue cookbook. And I took it in a box with other things out to the car to donate. And he was going to bake a batch of cookies. And he said, where's my cookbook? I said, what do you mean cookbook? You have a cookbook? He said, yeah, I've been working on these recipes for 20 years. And you've thrown away my cookbook? He was not happy. He was not happy at all. 
And I said, I haven't thrown it away. It's still in the car. So I went out and got it. Now he keeps it on his bookshelf so that I know this was early on in our marriage. And so that I don't touch his cookbook because he likes to cook. He likes to cook cookies, that is, and pies. He likes he likes pies. Okay, let's see if we got another question. But those drawers of recipes that you've never made, I think you should go through them. That's our challenge while you're listening to me right now. Go through them. Let's see. Memorabilia, my little daughter's, daughter's drawings. You know, your kids are going to go off to college one day and you're going to have a refrigerator box full of their drawings. Yep, you heard me right. They're taking over your house. Here is my suggestion for your children's drawings. Now, this is brilliant, even if I do say so myself. Okay, here's what I want you to do. I want, it was just starting from this day forward. For the whole week, collect them all in a folder or an inbox or something. Uh, one of those little boxes that uh, are kind of attached to the refrigerator with magnet and you drop things in it. Let them put their papers in that box. After you've looked at it, bragged on it, whatever, put it, put it in that folder. And then at the end of the week, let the child, not you, let the child pick their favorite picture or their favorite poem they wrote or their favorite anything from school. Whatever it is, let them pick it and you put it in a place of honor. It can be on the refrigerator. It can be on a bulletin board in a pretty frame and that way you'll get to look at it for the whole week and then during that week, you're collecting more papers. And on Saturday, let them go through the papers and pick out their favorite. And then what you do with the ones that aren't going on the wall of fame. You teach them how to address an envelope and mail it to their grandparents. Or their Aunt Sally or their Aunt Marla. But don't send them to me. I, don't, I, I got enough on my own. And then uh, you take the one that's on the wall that's been, you know, showcased for a whole week and you put it in a sheet protector and a three ring binder. And that's all you got to do. That's all you got to do. The kids learn to address an envelope. Mom and grandmom and granddad get to see what the kids are doing because most of us don't get to live close to our parents anymore. And then aunts and uncles get to see, older siblings get to see, and they don't have a problem throwing it out. And if they do, one day you'll declutter it for them. It's just that simple. The kids love it, and you're going to love it. Let's see if we've got some more questions. And you can take a picture of it, too. In fact, let me tell you a little story. The one thing that I had of Justin's when he was in first grade, I kept with me. I brought it into this house and I put it underneath my uh, cabinet in the kitchen, not in the kitchen, but in the living room. And it was with a bunch of other paper clutter, which I'm thankful I don't have paper clutter in that spot right now because yesterday we could have had an electrical fire. Our electricity was out. I got sidetracked, but I got to tell this. Our electricity was out all day, about six, seven hours it was out. And we have this USB that is the backup for direct TV so that when it goes out, it doesn't have to reboot itself. And it got overheated. If I'd have had papers under there, and we were going to dinner when it happened, and we come home from dinner, and I walk in, up, from up from downstairs to the upstairs, and I am hit with this smell, this electrical smell. And it was not pleasant. And we couldn't figure it out. And we're still trying to figure it out. But 
it's not doing it today and we didn't sleep with it on last night. So uh, I've been watching it pretty close today. But that one, going back to that piece of paper that Justin had, he had, now he's my little perfectionist. He's an only child and he's a perfectionist. And even at six years old, we knew he was a perfectionist because the homework assignment was to make a Christmas tree with glue on a red piece of construction paper with balls of construct green construction paper and make a Christmas tree. Well, he just didn't do paper wads. He did little bee spitballs, but they weren't spitballs, but they were tiny. And he put them all on the tree and put some red balls on it, some different things. And I kept that for a long time. Many years, it was my only Christmas tree. And I don't have a picture of it. But I remember it. Miss Nancy was his teacher. And she called me to parent-teacher night. And she said, you know, this was the best one we had. And she put it on the front of her desk as being her little wall of fame. But he had to stay in at recess to finish it because it's taken him too long. He just got caught up in it. And I laugh to this day thinking, about, he's my born organized child. He keeps me out of jail. This is wonderful. He is um, a godly man who loves his wife and loves his children and loves his mommy. So, but he was a little perfectionist and it, it was just funny. He's probably listening right now and he's not real happy I'm telling off. But that got destroyed in that cabinet by a little bit of mouse. It wasn't put up where it needed to be. It didn't have a home. So the paper we're going to keep has to have a home. It, we have to have a place to put it. And don't just stuff it in a desk drawer or stuff it in a file cabinet. It needs to have a purpose. What are you going to use it for? Are you going to need it one day? Are you going to need it for your income taxes? So you've got to just decide where things are going and put things there. Go through things six inches at a time, and you're going to eventually get through all your paper clutter, and you're going to have homes established for the stuff you want. Like we have an accordion file in the basement that has all of our owner's manuals for stuff. Well, once a year, you need to go through those and throw away the ones that, that you don't have the appliances for anymore. Why do you want to keep that? Do you have owner's manuals for cars that you don't have anymore? Get rid of them. They should have gone with the car when you got rid of it. Those, getting rid of those things a little at a time. Kind of make a list of the paper clutter you want to get rid of. I still have my record, report cards because mama put them in my scrapbook. All 12 years of report cards. Hey. It's okay to look at. I could show my grandchildren one day or they'll see it one day. I have um, little bins for all of my over here on the, in, the, in the closet. I have bins for all my office supplies. I need to refill things occasionally. That's not really paper clutter. But I do have my brother's photos that he can look at. I have that's not paper clutter. I'm saving that for him. And I don't have much paper clutter anymore. What is your paper clutter? I open my and shred that. That's you gotta shred those things as they come in the house. Okay, everybody. We only got a few more minutes. You better get that question in because it's going it's gonna be quitting time soon. I'm I started with a full charge this time. I'm down to 47%. This thing takes a lot of power to do this. How long do I keep the purge toys? I have younger children who could grow into them. Um, I wouldn't keep many toys. You don't have to keep many toys. Favorite toys you could keep. Each child needs their own bin of keepsakes. A little, um, not a 55 gallon one either. It's like 17 gallon is, is big enough to keep their, their favorite things in. They can keep a little toy. They can keep their trophies if they've outgrown them. 
they can keep a favorite paper, but it needs to be hermetically sealed so that moisture can't get to it and it can stay in their bedroom closet. They can stack things on it. And then when they go off to college, they can take it with them. When they get their own home, they can take it with them. Most of all, they're not going to want it. You want to keep these things for them. But if you have a child that wants to keep everything, then tell them if it'll fit in this box, they can keep it. And that helps them to let go of stuff because they have to get rid of something they don't love anymore. If you don't love it, you don't use it, you don't have a place for it. It needs to go away. And if they don't love it anymore, they can replace something in their bin with something they want to keep now. And that's bless someone else with it. Uh, those toys, a good way to deal with toys. Now, toys aren't paper clutter, but th we have a lot of toys. Toys, divide them into four groups. And then every month, change them out. Every month, change them out. Declutter the ones they've outgrown or that have broken. Put them in the bin and label them the next month that comes up. So if you're going to, here we're coming toward the end of the month. End of July, start going through the toys and put them in a bin and pull out one from three months ago. They'll be like brand new toys for them. And eventually, because if you have everything out, they're going to pull it all out. But if you only have one fourth of them out, that's one fourth, uh, three fourths of the mess is put away and you don't have to deal with it. This is going to make your life easier if you divide those toys into four batches box them up put them in the garage label them the next month they're going to come up so if you're getting rid of if the box for july then put it uh if it's summer toys and things then label it next june so you can get it out just rotate things out like that your life is going to be easier when you do this if my daughter-in-law taught me this one she was really good at rotating the kids' toys out because they had a lot of Legos. I mean, the Legos kind of stayed out all the time because Ethan likes loves them. Uh, favorite dolls stay out all the time, but the, the Thomas the Trains and the other Erector sets and different things, they got put in bins. And it makes it easier on you. Now, the stuff that is out, everything needs a place and everything in its place. A nice, low bookshelf can become a seating place, and it can also be a storage place for different toys, the different trucks and stuff, and they need to be labeled. They may not be able to read, but you know you can take a little picture and print it out and tape it up. We don't have to get all bent out of shape about the organization of it. We just have to declutter. The main thing I want you to remember is you can't organize clutter. We have paper clutter everywhere. Every inch of our house is covered in paper clutter. I want you to start dealing with it. Now, October is our month to deal with paper clutter, but here we are getting ready to start school. Do you have uh, your calendar yet? The August, our, you know, our Fly Lady calendar starts in August. And we got a great testimonial this morning that said she was so excited. She had the current calendar ready to go for the new school year. Because when they come home from school with every, everything you need to know for every holiday, you can get it on the calendar. And then we had someone ask a question today. What do you mean if it's not on the calendar, it ain't going to happen? Well, if you forget to put something on the calendar and you're used to using the calendar. Now, people say, I got my calendar on my phone. Well, that's, that's fine and good for you, but what about the rest of the family? What about your children? How are they going to learn how to use a calendar? I was 45 years old before I learned how to use a calendar. I never knew. Nobody ever taught me. That's the one thing about our calendar. 
we not only sell you a calendar that's a 17-month calendar that's got the biggest blocks you can get, but we teach you how to use it. You look at your calendar before you go to bed. Duh. What have I got tomorrow? What have I got to wear? Do I have to have a dressy outfit because I'm going to a luncheon? Uh, do Is it church day? Do I need to get out my church clothes? Look at your calendar and see what is on your agenda for tomorrow. And plan accordingly. Look at the weather. Is it going to rain? Do I need a raincoat? Do I need a jacket? It's just common sense. And then when you get up in the morning, be sure and look at your calendar. Now, one thing I like to do if I have an early morning doctor's appointment or something, I put a post-it note in the middle of my bathroom mirror that says appointment at 9 o'clock or whatever it is. It reminds me first thing in the morning if I forget to look at the calendar. I have to be reminded to look at the calendar. So be kind to yourself. Don't try to keep it all up here. we got so much stuff going on, we don't even know what's next. But if we have it on the calendar, our kids can go to the calendar and say, oh, that's what we're doing this weekend, so I really can't go. They can... They can tell somebody no so you don't have to be the person that's the bad guy all the time. If they want to go to a speak, sleepover and grandmother has a birthday party scheduled that y'all are taking her out to dinner or, or a family fun day, you're going to the park, the kid can look for himself and say, no, I can't do that this weekend. We're going to somebody, some, some waterfall, some beautiful place in the world. And I really want to go. Maybe we can do it next time. And he can put it on the calendar later after he gets permission. So doing this and getting it on the calendar, everybody's going to be able to see it. A hard calendar on the wall, a paper calendar on the wall is going to keep your family organized and keep you sane. Because if it's not on the calendar, it's not going to get done. Everything needs to be charted on the calendar. And you're just going to love it. What to, let's see, Diana wants to know what to do with old cards that the family gave you Christmas birthdays. I have a hat box, a wooden hat box. You can get them at Michael's or anywhere. And it got painted pretty and it's got some flowers on it. And I put those cards in there. Now, the Christmas cards I put with my Christmas stuff. They go with my Christmas stuff. And every year I go through them uh, when, I'm, when I'm getting the Christmas stuff out. And I, I start my Christmas um, mailing list for my Christmas cards. And then it's done. And you can let them go if you want to. Or you can keep them. I figure one day when I'm old and gray, I'm not gray, too gray yet, Uh, I'll I'll look back through them and and love these pictures and love the memories, love the people, say a prayer for each one of them. Uh, The Christmas cards, the thank you notes, they go in my memorabilia. It makes me happy to look back at them. You have to do what makes you happy. What gives you joy I mean, we find joy in the simplest things. I mean, this backdrop, this shiplap ship lap backdrop makes me happy. Who knows why? Because I like Joanna Gaines? I don't know. But it's, it looks good on camera. I like the, the slip cover here. I like to look in my memorabilia. I had to go through it a few months ago and, and list a bunch of things for um, a person, and it was fun to sort of stroll back through the memories. But I'm going to be making a whole bunch more. And I want you to be part of it. We've been going for about an hour now, and I feel like I've been talking to myself, even though I had two people on. Thank you uh, for being on with me. It's fun to get 
Judah asked the question in person. I don't feel like I'm talking to myself. And, you know, let's, I, I need to ask for prayers for a man that was kidnapped this week in our area. Our national forest was shut down for three day, four days. And this, this um, nice man from Mills River was kidnapped and that, they caught the guy on the manhunt, but Mr. Bryson's still missing. So keep him in your prayers and his family. It's just really hard when a loved one who was going to do a nice thing for his sister and take her to a doctor's appointment and somebody holds him up and takes his truck. And you know, it's been a tough, tough few days in, in our county and the next county. And he was caught two counties over. So let's just keep these families in our prayers. And y'all have a good good day. It's We got lots to do. But I want you to start attacking this paper clutter because it's getting on your nerves. And anytime you can get rid of something that bothers you, even if it's just this much at a, a day, you're going to love that. You're absolutely going to love it. And you're, it's going to be contagious. Just get rid of it. And you will be blessed. My prayers are with you all. I love you. And we will see you next week. Put it on the calendar. Um, sign up for notifications for when we go live. I'll be putting it up on YouTube and up on our website if you've missed it. Uh, share it. Tell other people about it. This is an important lesson we had today about getting rid of our paper clutter. And I will see you next week. I love you.